citizen has a special obligation to encourage the pursuit of learning, to promote exploration of the unknown, to preserve the freedom of inquiry, to support the advancement of research, and to assist at every level of government the improvement of education for all Americans. But the educated citizen knows how much more there is to know. He knows that knowledge is power. Welcome back, Giants. This week we'd like to do something a little bit different. We'd like to focus on something that may go overlooked on an everyday basis. Ignorance. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge or information on a certain subject. In many ways, we can fall ignorant to the realities of life, and it's important to remember that everyone's fighting their own battles. This week, we'll discuss ignorance in immigration, equality, teen violence, and communication. To start off, we have Anna Santiago and Aaron Falkenberg discussing immigration. My name is Lauren Robinson. I'm a U.S. citizen, and I actually have no background knowledge of immigration. According to FairUSA.org, in a study done, illegal immigrants cost America roughly a net average of $45 billion every year. And illegal immigrants also take roughly 730,000 American jobs. That's costing Americans $9.3 billion. SCAP, the State Central Alien Assistance Program, reported that 295,959 illegal criminals were caught in the year 2017. 84% of those that were charged were charged with murder, drug abuse, or drug dealing. In 2009, the FBI seized 1.4 million pounds, 700 tons to be exact, of illegal marijuana in southern Arizona that had been brought over the border with illegal immigration. A few days after that, an illegal immigrant woman was arrested with possession of several assault rifles, a handgun, multiple ammunition magazines, two weapons scopes, and 6,000 rounds of ammunition. So when I was growing up, I never really knew I was illegal until I reached sixth grade. That's like when we started filling out like forms for middle school and like 21st century scholars and like everybody would be picking their stuff. And um, it had like a little line where it said, your social security, like you had to put it down. And so I went to my mom and I was like, hey mom, like I need my social security, my birth certificate, blah, blah, blah. She was like, well, I need to talk to you. And I was like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> so that's when I found out I was legal. Basically, and I it's like applying to college. So you have to pay for a bunch of medical exams. Like total cost for my sister and I's medical exams was like over $700 and you have to pay for fingerprinting which costs 150 something you have to for us since our situation was a little bit more unique um we had to pay for certain documents to be imported from mexico to here which was very expensive it was like 50 dollars per package and we had about like four packages that we had to get here oh. and that doesn't guarantee your spot like that's just stuff you pay for so you can be able to like make the application. Big misconceptions about Im illegal immigration is that it's just Mexicans, but it's not just Mexicans, it's like Nigerians, um, Europeans, uh, refugees, people who really just can't even stay where they live, um, Hondurans, Salvadorians, you know, it's not just Hispanic or Latino countries that migrate here, it's all kinds of people, and everyone does it for different purposes. and. Basically, I am. My status here in the United States is a citizen. I was born here, but um, my dad, on the other hand, got deported due to not being legal here. Um, I was three years old when everything went down. My mom had just barely had my brother Eric, so for her, it was just more having to raise two kids on her own while my dad was having to go through the whole process of figuring everything out and being in prison for a while. Um, I just remember we would go every weekend just to see him because they would have him in prisons and he'll, I think he, in the whole time he was still here in the United States, he was in three different ones. 
and every weekend we would just travel two hours, three hours, just go see him. Um, I remember the first time, oh my god, why am I going to cry? The first time, um, it was just hard, like, having to see someone you love through, like, a glass w window and having to talk to them through the phone, like, it, I, w I have always been a daddy's girl, like, always have been a daddy's girl, so, so, like, just having to grow up without him was, like, hard, like, I remember, like, at school, you know, when they ha would have, like, the teacher meetings or whatever with their parents, like, I would hate seeing, like, kids with their dads, like, I'm like that's the thing I just don't understand how like people could just say like immigration is such a bad thing or they should send everybody back when they don't understand that they're splitting families apart like we're not here to cause trouble we're not here to sell drugs we're not here to do any of those stere stereotypical things like we all came here to have a better life than what we had before and I feel like that's what people just need to get through their heads that it's there's a reason we come here is because we want the American dream I think that immigration is given a bad name when it is in all actuality it's just people trying to take care of their families and give them better lives just like everyone here is trying to do so I think that we should cut them a bunch of slack and maybe try stepping outside of our own shoes and putting their shoes on to understand what they go through every day and to fully understand that it's not what the media portrays it out to be and it's just the real life struggle every day. Listening to the struggles of others can help us better understand the different situations in our world. With a better understanding, we can make for a positive change. Here's Gabby D and Ty on equality. Equality means to me equality means to me equality is equality means equality to me means well, equality to me means what does equality mean to you? To me equality is everyone gets respect no matter their color, their race, if they're orange, if they're black. It's just all the same amount of respect. To me, equality means treating people with fairness and respect no matter what race they are. Equality means equal rights for everybody. Everybody treating each other as one, as real people. Equality to me mean, means applying no double standards to a different group of people because everyone deserves that same mutual respect, especially if the thing that makes them different doesn't affect you whatsoever. Well, equality to me means being accepting of others despite your personal beliefs. Basically, equality means equal rights. It also means waking up in the morning, not being scared of going throughout your day. Equality to me means treating people fair and treating them better than what you've been treated. Equality means that everyone has the same respect and that when someone walks in the room, nobody judges you based on your sexual orientation, your race, or your gender. In order to keep a group down, in order to keep a group ununiform, you have to split them up. And one of the easiest ways to split people up is by race, and that's colorism. My dad is black and my mom is white. Stereotypes based on my skin bother me because a lot of people think that I can't speak on black issues like Black Lives Matter issues because I look more of white than black. Like, you shouldn't be afraid just because you have less melanin than somebody else to speak on an issue that everyone has in common. My specific ethnicity is African American. Like, somebody could say, oh, you're pretty for a dark skin, but what makes me pretty, like, not all dark skins are ugly, but that's what it sounds like. My best friend is Nia, and she's mixed. She's black and white, and she has pretty curly hair, too. So it's like, 
I feel like everybody looks at the light skin first before they look at the dark skin. Um, I identify as Eritrean, which is in East Africa. People are kind of like surprised when they're like, oh my gosh, you're African, you don't look like it. What do you mix with? Are you Indian? Comments like that like are ignorant to me because Africa is so diverse and like it goes from light skin, dark skin, there's all shades of people. Like you can be white and live in South Africa and be considered as South African. I feel like colorism in America like affects me because it's always like guys are always like, well, it's all over the place, but guys always set um, light skinned women and dark skinned women against each other. And um, you feel like to another person that you're always against them or you're being pushed to be against them. While we press on in this battle for racial equality, we should remember that regardless of our skin tone, we are all fighting for unification. Tylea Johnson, BD TV. Clear to see that equality can come in many different forms, and we can all practice treating people a little bit better. It's also important to realize not to result to violence in times of struggle. Here's Matt on teen violence. <laughs> Local law enforcement is concerned about the amount of teen violence that's erupting here in the metro. He says his daughter was out cold, gasping for breath after a fight with bullies at school. Youth violence is such an epidemic, it is now a public health issue impacting all of us. Okay, also this morning, cracking down on crime. That's what the city plans to do after a lot of recent assaults, getting some attention committed by young people. Today, May Tonight we're learning more about dating violence as a Lancaster County University continues to mourn the loss of a student who police say was strangled by her boyfriend. Authorities say Carly Hall was found dead on Sunday after a fight between her and her boyfriend. Right, police tell us the 17-year-old boy was shot right here behind the Eastman branch of the Cleveland Public Library just before noon today. During this last year, Ben Davis has been affected by teen violence. But teen violence is something that's been going around for many years. Maria Aranda attended Arsenal Tech High School, who back then and still is strongly affected by violence within young adults. Um, here are some uh, memories that I have in my uh, teenage senior year uh, back at Tech High School. But I've kept my memories of my friends and my um, IDs back when I was in high school. Um, we've kept um, just great memories on what we did that year, my senior year. Um, I've noticed a change in the teens now compared to the teens when I grew up. There were more, there were gangs, but there were gangs with more like without the guns. As a mother, Mariah now sees the factors that led to kids turning to violence. Now, the times now where you hear all the shooting, Young kids are stealing cell phones. Young kids are also getting on uh, buses, uh, stealing people's shoes. You need to hear that back then. And so much bullying is going on because of, of the media, of the Facebook and the Twitters. Um, I think that's been affecting a lot of kids' uh, emotions and trying to fit in, not be um, so laid back. Sometimes I think they want to belong. There are a lot of counselors, a lot of churches that like to help the youth that are involved in so many ways that they should seek help or a parent. I think a parent needs to get involved a little more to uh, see what's going on with the child, check on the child daily. I, as a parent, um, make sure that my kids are loved and cared about and make sure that um, if there's not enough to give to them, you know, explain it to them. Parents who explain could, it will mean a lot to, to their young adults. And um, young adults sometimes need just that little explanation without just saying no to, to someone. I think an explanation um, helps them understand better. Most people don't know this, but I'm a type one diabetic. I got diagnosed back in 2014 and it's been kind of a life changer for me. When I was 11, my mom passed away and it impacted me like in a very 
horrible way and I went into like a very deep, serious depression for years. I mean, I had, I had many people try to help me through everything, but nobody ever really like got to help me up until like, just like a, this past year. My mom, she stayed the night in the hospital when I got diagnosed. She was, I was freaked out. I didn't really know what was going on. Yeah, I never thought that I would ever really get over it because I mean, losing, losing a parent at such a young age is very hard for anybody. Well, there have been some times when my sugars have been way out of range and I just think about giving up and I'm like, you know, this is stupid. My parents, you know, they coach me. They say there's nothing to be mad about. My brother has always been there from the jump because he was there like through everything. There's always somebody there to help you, whether it's like somebody that you know personally or if you just like talk to somebody random about whatever you're going through, there's always somebody there that will help you. I would say that if you didn't have anybody to talk to, you would seek out, you should seek out a friend or go talk to a teacher or someone else in the school. If you don't go to school, you know, maybe go talk to a police officer, somebody who can be on your good side to help you get through the struggles of life. Teen violence, or any violence at that, is a very real problem in our world today. Let's join Maddie, Tony, and Zeke as they show us how we can better make a difference with the way we communicate. Zeke, you're white. I don't expect you to understand. How you gonna tell me that I'm privileged when my family started out with nothing, then we made a business and made something of ourselves? See, that's easy for you and your dad to say. They didn't have the entire government against them. You act like there's slavery and Jim Crow laws. Nowadays, you have to work hard for something to get it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Zeke, you're literally so blind to all the privilege that you and your family have. Maddie, we literally go to the same school. We just had a black president. We both literally got the same education. We both seem equal to me. You know what, Zeke, just, Stop talking. Just stop. Okay. And... Hey, can I get a dollar? No, bro. I only got like two. You know it's 125. Okay, I'm gonna kick yeah, start. but one for you, one for me, and then we can both can get chips. Maddie, I'm like really thirsty. Okay, Tony, I'm really hungry. I didn't eat lunch today. Fine, Maddie. Here's your chips. We will get chips. Thank you. Hey, who was you subtweeting the other day? You just won't believe what Zeke said the other day. It was literally so ignorant. What was he talking about? Basically that everyone's equal and that privilege doesn't exist. But I mean, if you look around our society, it clearly does. <laughs> okay, so what were you saying then? I just basically just told him that he was wrong. Like, nothing that he said made any sense and it was pointless. So you didn't try to like educate him, give him facts or something? Well, I mean, I tried and I was going to, but I just couldn't sit there and just keep listening to him. I literally grabbed my stuff and just left. Okay, so now it's your fault that it was pointless, because you really could have just educated okay, him. But am I, if someone's disrespecting me, am I just going to sit there and take it, or should I stand up for myself and just leave it be? Like, just... I mean, I get where you're coming from, but think about it like this, right? He wasn't harassing you, he wasn't being violent. That was just your chance to literally educate him. You could have changed him. I mean, I guess, but I just didn't see a point. Maddie, how do you expect him to be a better person if you're not going to actually teach him something and educate him? Why can't he learn that on his own? Look, I mean, the reality is he's already there. You could have been the one to change him, Maddie, but you're still stuck in your head. Yeah, put your Put your pride aside, for real. Okay. All right, Maddie. Uh, you should just hit him up or something. I don't know. You've been friends with Zeke for how long? You're just going to cut him off? but still, like, I don't know. I'll think about it. I All right, then. I'll see you. Right. Use the dollar efficient. Very powerful topics discussed today. Hopefully you were able to take something away from our show. Thank you and have a good weekend.